Good evening. All right. And I hope it is a good one. I'm Gilda Barabino, and I'm serving as Dean of the Grove School of Engineering at the City College of New York. And I must say, after serving as co-chair of last year's EDI, I want to give a very special congratulations to Teresa and Javier and those that work with them for a fantastic job. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce this evening's keynote speaker, Dr. Nadine Aubrey. Dr. Aubrey currently serves as Dean of the College of Engineering and University Distinguished Professor at Northeastern University. She's an internationally recognized scholar and academic innovator who has made notable contributions to research and education both at Northeastern and at Carnegie Mellon University where she was head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, the Raymond Lane Distinguished Professor and University Professor. She's also held academic positions at the City College of New York and at the New Jersey Institute of Technology. She's an elected member of the National Academy of Engineering and the Academy of Arts and Sciences as well as a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Academy of Mechanics, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, the American Physical Society, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and the National Academy of Inventors. Among her many honors, she was a recipient of the 2017 G.I. Taylor Medal from the Society of Engineering Science. Dean Aubrey has held leadership positions in a number of organizations, including chair of the National Academy's U.S. National Committee on Theoretical and Applied Mechanics and the American Physical Society's Division of Fluid Dynamics, the governing board member of the National Academy of Engineering Council and president of the International Union of Theoretical and Applied Mechanics. She has served on numerous advisory and review boards in the United States and in foreign countries. A native of France, who is now a dual citizen, Dean Aubrey holds INP and DEA degrees from France in mechanical engineering and a PhD in mechanical and aerospace engineering from Cornell University. This July, she will join Tufts University as its provost and senior vice president. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Dean Aubrey. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much, Gilda, for this humbling introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, tonight to uh, talk to you about uh, the prize that you are now familiar with uh, due to um, the distinguished um, uh, note, uh, keynote speech of uh, Joe um, Herbler uh, earlier today. Um, I'd like to uh, start uh, by stepping back a little bit and talking to you about the National Academy of Engineering. I know you are all very familiar with it, uh, but nevertheless, uh, there are uh, a few. Um, uh, the mission is not necessarily uh, that well known, and so I I'd like to get back to it. It was founded in 1964. Uh, it's a private, independent, and nonprofit institution that provides engineering leadership in service to the nation. So we all believe and we all think that the NAE is a honor organization, but its mission is actually not that. The mission is actually to render service to the nation, and in particular to advance the well-being of the nation by promoting a vibrant engineering profession. And that sounds familiar to all of you. <laughs> it's very aligned with our mission as deans and also leveraging the expertise and insights of eminent engineers to provide independent advice to the federal government on matters involving, of course, engineering and technology. So at this occasion, um, I'm, I'm delighted that there are a number of deans who are actually present in the room 
uh, here who are members of the National Academy of Engineering, and um, I I'd like to uh, also uh, recognize our four uh, new members, uh, um, uh, deans, who have been elected uh, two months ago to the NAE, Gilda herself, who was just here, Congratulations to Gilda, but congratulations to Daron Pines of the University of Maryland, Alec Gallimore from the University of Michigan, and Barry Shoup of the Cop Cooper Union, and, and I'd like Theresa for uh, congratulating them as well in her introductory remarks, so congratulations to all. And, and thank you for all the um, NAE members also present in the room. Uh, but uh, for those of you who do, was, were just elected, if you think that this is time to retire, it's not. Because remember that we are a service uh, society uh, or organization, I should say, not a society or an organization. And therefore, we are going to give you a lot of work. <laughs> I'm looking at Gilda, who, uh, who is uh, not perhaps so happy, but this is reality, Gilda. <laughs> um, so under this umbrella of um, rendering service to the nation, the NAE has a lot of activities. Uh, it is tasked with identifying and illuminating issues at the intersections of engineering technology and society um, that impact our quality of, li of life as a society. And therefore, there are a lot of studies, symposia, and public information activities that I'm sure a lot of you have participated in, and, and we are in the future. Um, and those are actually e either held by the NAE program office within the NAE, but also a lot of times in conjunction with um, the National Academy of um, Sciences as well as the National Academy of Medicine. And the activities can be regrouped in uh, under four bullets here, which are projects and programs, annual meeting, uh, usually the first week of October in, in uh, Washington, D.C. And if you have not uh, um, attended these meetings, they are uh, open to the public, and I would encourage you to do so. Reports. Um, there have been a lot of reports. Um, I cited one of them, making climate assessments work for example, but as Joe mentioned earlier today, there are a lot of reports on education as well. And finally, awards. Uh, the NAE recognizes uh, excellence and rewards for uh, engineering achievement and innovation. And I have cited a few of these prizes here, which are very prestigious, but highlighting that the last one is actually an education uh, prize, the Barnard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation, Engineering, and Technology Education, as and, and you have seen, um, uh, uh, you have seen a, a, an outstanding example in Joe Herbler's uh, presentation earlier today. An outstanding uh, example of what kind of innovation can be done in engineering. The motivation, as Joe uh, mentioned, is um, that at the turn of the uh, 21st, uh, uh, 21st century, at the end of the 20th century, um, it had been realized that uh, uh, scientific and technological advances played a crucial role in the U.S. prosperity. And at the time, it was uh, um, also reflected that uh, um, to maintain the U.S. preeminence in the 21st century, um, it would be quite difficult. It was actually an open question, and to my knowledge, it's still an open question. Um, and, and without further need uh, for research and talent pipeline, um, it, it's unlikely that uh, the U.S. is going to maintain its preeminence and, and, and influence society as it has done um, earlier, particularly in the 20th century. And, and um, in talent pipeline, of course, uh, engineering education is key, um, which has led to a lot of adaptation and innovation with many curriculum reforms, and we have found a, a lot of them uh, today in particular. And those are focused on strong engineering skills, we all agree on this, but uh, um, these reforms also have started to expand to professional skills, um, closing the skills gap, as we heard today, uh, experiential education, uh, diverse workforce, etc., and, and those reforms are only driven by the deans, uh, all of you. <laughs> In particular, there is also a need to produce engineering leaders, and engineers, uh, particularly engineers which are, who are capable of assuming leadership roles. 
And so in 2001, the NAE decided to create uh, this Gordon Prize uh, just to uh, focus on uh, education innovations. Uh, the overview of the prize, uh, um, it's given annually, and it was enabled by the generous gift of Barnard uh, Gordon, who is considered as the father of analog to digital conversion and has founded uh, a number of companies himself. And not only is he a member of the NAE, but he's, he also uh, was honored with the National Medal of Technology. Um, the intent of the prize is to recognize new modalities and experiments in education that develop effective engineering leaders. And the focus is on innovations uh, such as uh, curricular design, teaching methods, and technology-enabled learning that strengthen students' capabilities and desire to grow into leadership roles. And this is basically what we all do <laughs> as deans and what we we'll all talk about. So this is not unfamiliar to us. Um, the other feature of the prize is that it's actually quite lucrative. <laughs> it's a half million dollar prize, uh, and uh, half of that goes to the recipient, and half goes to the recipient's institution uh, for, con for continued support of the innovation. So you, deans, could be recipients, but even if you are not, um, your colleges, your institutions are going to benefit uh, from the prize as well to continue uh, to develop um, the particular innovation. So it, it's only like a grant. So I wanted to point this out. Um, there is a ceremony also at your institution. So you, the NAE actually goes to the institution and there is uh, a, white, a white communication on such a ceremony. And there is a medal accompany, accompanying the ceremony. And then there is a public lecture from the recipient during the NAE's annual meeting in the fall. So it's, a, it's not only a, a way to recognize your different programs, but also a way to um, bring um, a, a reputation to your programs in, in hope also to uh, diffuse uh, such a program to other universities. The selection criteria are uh, the educational paradigm. Uh, the nominator has to show how the program uh, is unique, um, what is unique about the particular innovation. Then the second criterion is about the, the paradigm execution, uh, about the quality and the impact of the program and the effect on the students, of course. And there is a third criterion, which is transferability and diffusion. So it is important for the NAE that you are not only doing this within your own institution, uh, but you also have made uh, an effort to uh, uh, diffuse uh, that effort to other institutions. And of course, you have to show also uh, the success in producing engineering leaders um, by identifying individuals who have benefited uh, from the program and have been successful after graduating from your various universities. And finally, you have to show also how you are going to use the prize because it's kind of um, like a grant. <laughs> and so um, how is the nominee's institution going to use half of the prize to enhance the innovation and share ideas with other institutions? The needed materials are pretty straightforward. It's an online nomination form. Narrative description of the teaching innovation is needed. Um, there is a need for also current curriculum, of the current curriculum of the program and the teaching innovation, but also the nominee's uh, short CV. Supporting letters, of course, which are um, very, uh, uh, very important. Uh, to show the impact of the program. And finally, if you have published, if the uh, nominee has published uh, the innovation in publications, also um, uh, uh, provide a bibliography of such publications. Recent Golden Prize winners, of course, uh, earlier today, you saw an outstanding example. Um, I cited here uh, in 2019, the team who won uh, was from Georgia Tech and Emory University. Um, they had created a lot of leaders in biomedical engineering through their program. 
which fused uh, problem-driven engineering education with learning science principles to create a pioneering program. Um, in 2018, it was also a biomedical engineering program uh, at Stanford uh, for the development and global dissemination of biodesign, a biomedical technology program creating leaders and innovations that benefit patients. Um, these are two other examples in 2017, 2016. I'm not going to go through the details, but one was from um, Northwestern University, the other one from WPI, and here is a more comprehensive list uh, all the way to 2002 with uh, Joe's uh, program listed here in red. We were fortunate and very privileged actually to get such an award um, a, a year um, after his um, uh, he's being um, um, identified as the winner. So all the way to 2002, um, so you, you, you have a very good example, Tufts University, my new university actually was also an awardee, uh, I'm proud to say that. And finally, I'd like to encourage all of you to think about which kind of innovation um, you are creating in your own institutions uh, to educate the next generation of engineering leaders. Learn more at this particular website on the NAE, at the NAE website. And um, also um, on that website, you can look at more programs. I know you heard Joe today, but um, you can hear more of the acceptance remarks of the, of the different uh, winners. And, and also listen to actually their Golden Prize lectures uh, that were given at the NAE annual meeting. And finally, here is the um, website where you can submit your nominations. Um, unfortunately, it's too late for this year. <laughs> uh, the nominations um, period was from January 1st to uh, April 1st, but I hope to see, uh, that we can see a lot of nominations for next year in 2020, and the dates won't be approximately the same. And finally, this is the selection committee. I have the privilege to share the committee. All of us would like to um, answer any questions you may have to encourage your nominations. And the NAE program officer is Deborah Young. Um, and um, I have listed her email address and telephone numbers. So thank you very much. Um, um, I, again, I hope that um, you will uh, submit, submit your um, uh, universities and colleges uh, um, uh, nominations uh, to this program, I know that, uh, to this um, award, I know that um, many of you um, are, have developed or are developing programs worthy of this reward. Uh, again, it's also very lucrative <laughs> uh, because of the size of the prize. I know there are many other prizes from the ASCE in particular and, and other organizations uh, but I hope that you won't be able to consider this particular prize. And finally, I'd like to conclude by saying that I've been dean for seven years. For seven years, I've come to this uh, meeting. I've learned a lot. I remember my first meeting, and I went to the new dean's uh, forum, where uh, only, uh, I learned a lot about how to become a dean. Um, so I'm going to only miss tremendously this community and uh, this meeting in particular. So thank you very much, and it was a privilege to talk to you tonight. Thank you.